Hello and welcome to a brand new tutorial review with myself, Dan Allen, here on YouTube. We're going to be taking a look at the Magic Bullet Suite. Over the next few videos, we're going to take a look at all the different plugins that the suite has to offer, starting with the film plugin inside of Final Cut Pro 10. Now, let's just jump straight in because I know you guys probably want to know how the plugin works and what it does. So, if we click on the effects panel here and scroll down and click on the Magic Bullet Suite, and we can see right here we've got the Magic Bullet Film plugin. Now, if we scrub over it, we can see a little preview of what it's doing. It's doing many things, but what's more important is what it offers and what it allows you to do. So we've dragged and dropped it onto the clip and instantaneously you'll notice the contrast has increased. Why is this happening? Well, Magic Bullet Film is a very cool app because the creators behind it, Red Giant, really did their research. They went out, they tested a load of film negatives and film stock, which is basically a film that you record your film onto and then the film stock for exhibition that is uh, screened in cinemas, if your cinema still projects in film, that is. Now, what you need to do first is identify whether your footage is flat, uh, log, or video. Now, flat basically means you've got a, a nice, flat, desaturated image with not too much dynamic range so that you can play around with it in post. Log is from a more sophisticated camera. It's basically, it's not raw because raw isn't actually video. Raw is more information, but it's the video um, output of raw. So if you're shooting raw on something like the black magic or the red, then you want to choose log. And if you shot on a digital SLR without a plugin like cine style, then choose video. So because I shot with cine style on the uh, Canon 550D, I'm going to choose flat. And then what you want to do is you want to choose your film stock. Now there's lots here, I don't have time to go through them all, but the most important thing is that you download the plugin, have a play around with the demo, which is unlimited, but there is a uh, watermark, so you can't use it for your finished output and finished projects. So I actually really like the one uh, that they've chosen, so I'm going to stick with that. And then we choose a print stock, so this is the stock that you output with. I'm going to go for the uh, Kodak 2395, I really like the look, it has a slightly vintagey feel, but there's actually even more customizations for vintage looks, which we'll get to in a moment. Now the first two sliders help you control the colour. Now the colour temperature is basically a scale between warm and cold. Uh, if you want it to look like the action is taking place on the sun, then go for 100% colour temperature, but because the scene is quite moody, I want to bring that down to about minus 44, looks good. And then we can also oscillate between greens and magentas to really have control over our image. I think very slightly into the greens is going to help uh, bring out this the negative feel of the scene. It's really important that when you colour correct, you're really uh, accentuating what the vibe, the tone and the atmosphere of the scene is. And especially what's happening with your characters and your protagonists. Then you've got exposure. The exposure actually blows it out very quickly, so often you won't have to play around with that. I think if you need to brighten up the image, then the contrast is a good way to increase uh, your highlights and darken the shadows. But I actually want to take the slider down the other way, because if we bring up our video scopes, and if you don't see the view I'm looking at at the moment, then we can click on this gear here, and you can choose the histogram view. And I'm going to go for... Luma, and this basically shows the distribution of the colors. Now you can see there's quite a lot of low-end colors here. That's because if we look over this side of the screen, there's a lot of uh, black colors in the footage. Now if we were to bring down the exposure, you can see that whereas 125 represents pure white pixels and zero represents pure black pixels, most of the pixels are down towards the darker end. And what you want to make sure you do is get a fair balance. Now obviously you can have a darker scene, but you just gotta be careful that you don't make the image unseeable. So I'm gonna bring down the contrast a bit, but you can see there's no there's no actual pure black pixels in our shot now, which is fine. We can bring it down a little bit more, and around there looks cool to me. I don't want um, pure black pixels because it's hard to see exactly what's going on and some displays won't check that well also because it's daytime and it would be silly to have uh, that high intensity contrast when the the sun is out and shining even if it's not on the subject matter of the scene now we've also got saturation 
where if you bring that right down, you can turn it into black and white. Although there is a black and white film stock at the bottom with Pro uh, Prolostia. But the saturation slider, I like bringing it down a little bit with film, but that's that's more me. Now skin tone, this is a cool slider that is very similar to a slider from the Mojo plugin, also from the Magic Bullet Suite. And basically it helps uh, preserve and change the skin tones despite what you're doing with the rest of the scene. But because there's a lot of brickwork that is actually producing very similar brownie orange colors to the flesh of uh, this actor, then it's gonna be harder to uh, protect the skin color. So I'm just gonna leave that at neutral for now. But if you have um, a white actor in, say, like a, a very green forest scene, then it's going to help change uh, or preserve the, the fleshy tones if you are turning the scene a lot more grungy and blue and green. Now what I really like is the fact that we've got this vintage and modern slider. If we slide it all the way up to modern then you're basically you're going into the future and it's high intensity, it looks something like a Bourne movie and then if we go all the way down it flashes the image and it starts to look really retro like a, a 1960s psychedelic kind of feel and vibe and I, I really like that. But I'm going to go slightly backwards just because uh, stylistically it feels kind of like a British social realist film which is kind of what I was going for when I shot this. And then what we also get is grain. Now often I love having grain in my movies and in the past it's been limited to adding the preset grain or the noise filter in Final Cut but now we have a, a grain filter that is very authentic and we can push all the way up to 200 without it looking like a digital incarnation but what's really important is that once we played around with the grain we full screen the image and then pause it because during playback Final Cut will often blur the image because it hasn't finished rendering and preparing the full res video for playback it wants to give you consistent performance so go full screen with command shift F and then press the space bar to pause and then you can see how your grain is looking uh, on your full screen then you've got a vignette. Now vignettes are still really handy and still used widely in today's cinema. If you've got a corridor scene, for example, a vignette's going to really help you to focus the audience's attention down to the end of the corridor. And then finally what we have is the strength bar. Strength zero being the effect is off. If we toggle Magic Bullet Film off, you can see it does nothing now because the strength slider is at zero. But if we now put the strength slider all the way up to 100, then that is the effect we've just created in full swing. Now, let's say that you wanted to apply this effect to your whole timeline. You should check out my other tutorial uh, about total adjustment, which is a way for you to apply this effect to your entire scene, and it's going to save you a lot of time. So I'll leave a link in the description below. Now, I think this is a really cool and really powerful plugin. It's probably my favorite out of the suite. But one thing that I, one issue rather, that I do have with it is that it only supports resolutions up to 1080p. Now, normally this is absolutely fine, and for 90% of my films this is absolutely fine, but if you are working at, on a bigger project in 2K, 4K, 5K, then it's not going to offer the support and compatibility, and the grain in particular is going to start to look very pixelated very quickly when you are outputting and recording in those resolutions. But hopefully you'll see that it's still really quick, really powerful film style, uh, film look plugin that I know a lot of you guys like to have in your movies. Now, if that's something that you're after, then I would really strongly recommend Magic Bullet Film for your films. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Dan Allen on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe, comment, share if you enjoyed it, and check out Magic Bullet Film, and I'll be publishing videos on the other applications in the suite in the very near future. So thanks for watching and stay tuned.